Game of Thrones Season 7, Episode 4, The Spoils of War. But before we get into it, man, shout out to Casey. Thank you so much for sending Mrs. October this shirt. I think she's really cute in it, and I really like it. It's pretty cool it. that you have a little Game of Thrones merchandise. I know. It's awesome. House Targaryen all day, baby. Fire and All day, baby. So <laughs> I'm so excited to get into Game of Thrones. We're definitely coming down to the end of it. I know I say it in every video, but seriously, guys, uh, show us some support, man, because we're going to hop right into House of Dragons as soon as we're done with this. We're going to try to get caught up on that because I know that it's coming out live, and we want to be able to catch it. So yep. it's going to be crunch time this month. We got about a month left until it yeah. airs. So we're going to be busy with Game of Thrones this month. We got to get it done. So let's go. Let's go. So what type of episode are we about to get? Just like an extremely intense one or like a laid back one, a character development one? Oh my gosh. I had a, also, guys, a realization that Littlefinger was also on Quantum Break. What's that? Oh, a video game. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But so was Iceman on Didn't X-Men. Didn't you show me that like forever ago, like yeah. months ago? <laughs> I was, well, yeah, whenever we started Game of Thrones, I was Bro, like. She's been holding back on y'all. <laughs> forgot. Yeah, that was a while ago. And that's that season two action. <laughs> It's weird to be like five episodes deep now and Ramsey Snow has been like a figment, you know? That is true. But I guess in a sense, he'll never leave us. <laughs> what is it that he said to Sansa? I'm a part of you. I'm a part of you now. Sansa, Sansa, Sansa. That's a good Ramsey impression, though. Jingling, jingling. Jingling. I really hope uh, the next series has something like that in it. Hey, when they say D and D, they're talking about the directors. I thought they were saying Dungeons and Dragons the whole time in the not comments. Me. <laughs> not me. I did not think that. Someone's only talking. only early on did I think that. <laughs> Give me the loot, boys. Jamie's a whole damn pirate. Hey. Ron's paid up. You've just won the biggest prize in the world. What could you possibly have to be upset about? Come on, you can tell me. Queen of Thorns, give you one last prick in the balls before saying goodbye. <laughs> I'll save my confessions for the High Septon. There is no more High Septon. No, there isn't, is there? There is still the question of my prize. Didn't what, you just castle? get a? Didn't you just That's get some? Of money just <laughs> it's not a castle. Right. How about that one? It's available. You don't want High Garden. I beg to differ. We're at war. Daenerys Targaryen could come and take it back the day after you move in. Besides, think of the upkeep. The more you own, the more it weighs you down. Oh, is that why you're so f***ing glum, eh? Because <laughs> you're <laughs> weighing you down. <laughs> Rich people problems. This all belongs to the Iron Bank. Oh, yeah. We pay our debts. Right. Just not to me. The Bron of the Blackwater, formerly of whatever nameless shit heap you're from, with a saddlebag full of gold, complaining about not getting paid. When we win this war, all the castles in the Seven Kingdoms will be yours to choose from, with no one left to take them away from you. The granaries are being emptied and loaded into wagons, my lord. The current harvest? We have teams of men collecting it from all the farms in the reach. This sounds a little brother. Yeah, yeah. I'm not Dickin. much for shoveling weight. I must say, I don't think the Iron Bank has ever had a debt of this magnitude repaid in a single installment. I always considered your father a very effective and efficient man, but you appear to be redefining those terms entirely. You're too kind, my lord. I am merely an instrument of the institution I represent. Its well-being is a matter of arithmetic, not sentiment. And the current arithmetic <laughs> is outstanding. That's boring her. My brother is supervising its transportation himself. Some at the Iron Bank will be disappointed. They've grown rather fond of your interest payments. We must devise a way to raise their spirits. Yes. He sounds kind of like a gangster without sounding like a gangster, don't he? Right. He's venture. basically saying he's about that bottom dollar, baby. My only venture at this moment is re-establishing control over this continent and every person on it. <laughs> I imagine it would require outside investment. <laughs> well, indeed. I need to expand my armies, my navies. My hand, Kyburn, has made overtures to the Golden Company in Essos. They have helped us recover significant sums from parties who'd fallen into deep arrears. I too would like them to recover some things that belong to me. You can count on the Iron Bank's support uh, as soon as the gold arrives. It's coming. Yeah, what are you assuming? <laughs> that it's not? This is for you. Well, he doesn't know. He's just taking her word, right? That's the, one, the same one that they try to get Oh, that was Tyrion. That's one they showed in the recap, yeah. Throat that your mother fought him off. How'd you get your paws on it, Bubba? The other dagger. The one that took her life. I would have stopped that dagger with my own heart if I could have. Remember, he said that that was his. Tyrion took it. Mm -hmm. I wasn't there for her when she needed me most. But I am here for her now. To do what she would have done. To protect her children. Anything I can do for you, Brandon, need only ask. 
That's not Brandon. You know who this belonged to? No. That very question was what started the War of the Five Kings. In a way, that dagger made you what you are today. Forced from your home, driven out to the wilds beyond the wall. I imagine you've seen things most men wouldn't believe. He's unfazed by that thing. But if he sees everything, ain't that the thing? He sees every possible possibility? Go through all of that and make your way home again, only to find such chaos in the world. Because of you. I can only imagine. Chaos is a ladder. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's exactly what I was thinking. Bro, that that's me the, that's right that there. three eye right there. That's that three eye talk. I'm sorry to have disturbed you, Lord Stark. Ooh. I'm not Lord Stark. He just proved that right there. He said, listen to me. I'm the three eye. I know what you did. Maester Welkin built it for me so I can move around more easily. It's a very good idea. You're leaving. I don't want to leave you. But when, when they come, I need to be with my family. Aw. Bro, she's bouncing. You don't need me anymore. No, I don't. Dang. That's all you forgot to say. Thank you. Bro, her brother died for you. I know, you. right? For helping me. My brother died for you. Hodor and Summer died for you. I almost died for you. Oh. Brian. I'm not really. Not anymore. Oh, that's the prove the proving I point. What it felt like to be Brandon Stark. But I remember so much else now. <sighs> you died in that cave. That kind of sucks because in a way we should be mourning Bran. Yeah. Because he's gone now. He's a three eye. He just made that very clear. He's a three eye. Oh man. Oh, thanks, Mira. I don't know why, but I was like shipping their relationship or whatever you call it. Like I wanted them to be together. Like a couple? Yeah. Oh, you meant just like together? Well, just like always like together because she was like kind of his bodyguard. <gasps> I thought that was the uncle, but it was her. Yeah, hop on a center to the Winterfell. Where are you going? In there. That here. happened at King's Landing, remember? I'm Arya Stark. This is my home. What is it? This happened to her at King's Landing <laughs> with two guards. Arya Stark's dead. Send for Maester Lewin or Sir Roderick. They'll tell you who I am. There's no Roderick here. Maester's name Walcum. Go ask Jon Snow then. The King in the North. He's my brother. He's a thousand miles away. <laughs> Look, it's cold. If Jon's gone, who's in charge of Winterfell? The Lady of Winterfell. <laughs> Lady Stark? Which Lady Stark? You tell us. You're the one impersonating her sister. Tell Sansa her sister's home. Lady Sansa is too busy to waste her breath on you, just like us. Man, slap him. I'm getting into this castle one way or another. If I'm not who I say I am, I won't last long. But if I am, and Sansa finds out you turn me away. <laughs> she always right. having rough times at the gate. Sit there. Right there. No, what? she just gets no respect. I'll watch her. They're scared of her. Oh, she's finally home. This girl's been through it, y'all. She's kind of like Bran in a way. Dang, she lost who she was too. She was over here shooting arrows behind Bran's back when she was supposed to be studying and sewing. Oh. Oh, she ain't even there anymore. <laughs> we told her to wait. We were standing right next to her, and, and when we turned around, she'd gone, my lady. She, she was nothing. Some Wintertown girl. She comes in asking for uh, Sir Roderick, Roderick yeah. and Maester Lewin. Lewin, yeah. And, uh, and uh, don't, don't trouble yourself. <laughs> She's like, we'll, we'll, we'll find her. You don't have to. You know where she is. All in the crypts. Bro, you've been waiting on this. Are you ready? Let's go. I know. I'm going to probably cry. Do I have to call you Lady Stark now? Yes. <laughs> Man, I've been through some shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Guards. I didn't run. You need better guards. <laughs> it suits you, Lady Stark. John left you in charge. He did. And she's an assassin, I Arya. Comes back soon. I remember how happy he was to see me. When he sees you, his heart will probably stop. It doesn't look like him. Should have been carved by someone who knew his face. Everyone who knew his face is dead. That's crazy. Why not? That's the homie since season one. They say you killed Joffrey. Did you? Wish I had. Me too. I was angry when I heard someone else had done it. However long my list got, he was always first. Your list? Of people I'm going to kill. Dang, you just learned a lot about your little <laughs> sister. <laughs> <laughs> of people I'm going to kill. Did you get back to Winterfell? <laughs> it's a long story. I imagine yours is too. No, it's pretty it's short. Very pleasant Actually. Life. Mine neither. His name is, uh, But Ramsey. our stories aren't over yet. Bran's home too. <sighs> She's tickled. <laughs> That was a little flatter than I was hoping it would be, to be honest. I thought it was going to be a little happier, but I guess he's just been through so much. And here comes Moran, too. And he has, too. And his and he's not even himself. So that's probably going to break both of their hearts. He ain't exactly a confetti cake over here, either. You came home. Oh. You notice they made her a little tanner, though, because she's, like, been overseas and stuff. Mm -hmm. I saw you at the crossroads. You saw me? I see quite a lot now. Bran has visions. I thought you might go to King's Landing. 
So did I. Why would you go back there? Cersei's on her list of names. Oof. That's so creepy. Like, if you're Arya, you know? Yeah, it's like, I didn't really want to tell everyone that stuff, but he's just going to put everyone out there. Who else is on your list? Most of them are dead already. Loki, a hitman. Where did you get this? Littlefinger gave it to me. He is declared for House Stark. Why would he give you a dagger? He thought I'd want it. Why? Because it was meant to kill me. The cutthroat, after your fall. Why would a cutthroat have a Valyrian steel dagger? Someone very wealthy wanted me dead. He's not a generous man. He wouldn't give you anything unless he thought he was getting something back. I don't want it. Are you sure? She's like, I'll take that John. Yeah, steel. heck yeah. It's wasted on a cripple. Heck yeah. Add it to the inventory. We need all the Valyrian steel we can get before the wars to come. I think Sansa was mad that Littlefinger didn't share with her that, though. Yeah, it seemed like it. Catelyn Stark would be proud. You kept your vow. I did next to nothing. Too hard on yourself, my lady. I'm not a... Yeah, just say thank you, lady. Thank you, Patrick. There we go. There you go. She just can't take a compliment at all. I feel wrong on that, though. <laughs> a little snake in the grass. A little snake in the snow. <laughs> There's still no word from the Unsullied. Soon, he will come back to you. Look at her costume. <sighs> That's nuts. She looks what insane, happened? don't she? Look at that sash. Your Grace. <laughs> Jonathan. Hello. I think he's supposed to be mine. Yeah, <laughs> Archaeologist John. Yeah. If he had the lamp head thing, I would be dead, boy. Can I bother you for a cup of lemonade, you guys? <laughs> it's tough down here. And an onion. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted you to see it before we start hacking it to bits. Oh, let's go. We get to see the dragon glass. Okay, cool. Man, that's a lot <laughs> of it, I guess. I know. Oh, look. All we'll ever need. He's a jackpot. In his terms. She's like, well, damn, I gotta charge you now. There is something else I wanna show you, you crazy. And she lived there and didn't know about this. That's pretty cool, though, right? I would have explored the island. Oh! Whoa. Cave drawings. The children of the forest. Children of the forest. When? Oh, a very long time ago. Maybe another long night before? They were right here. Standing where we're standing. Before there were Targaryens or Starks or Lannisters. Maybe even before there were men. No. Damn, John, you better call a newspaper or something. They were here together, the children and the first man. Doing what? Fighting each other. Assuming those are accurate, right? They fought together against their common enemy, despite their differences, despite their suspicions. That's the evidence we need to get her on the together, cause. Maybe. We need to do the same if we're going to survive. They did a good job writing that junk out, or John could understand the enemy it, though. It's real. Yeah, he's it's seen that guy. Been real. And you say you can't defeat them without my armies and my dragons. No, I don't think I can. I will fight for you. I will fight for the North. Okay. Dang, so she bought that? When he bend the knee. Oh, yeah, because I would have been like, didn't, you could have drew these. My people won't accept a Southern ruler. Not after everything they've suffered. They will if their king does. Isn't their survival more important than your pride? Oh, that's tough there. What'd you do? Oof. Okay, so last thing I'm gonna say about these cave drawings, guys. In my mind, if I'm Daenerys, I'm just like, okay, I understand. But in my mind, maybe the fact that there's these cave drawings is what gave myth to the walkers. You know what I'm saying? Right. Not the opposite. But uh, you know, in season one, where or season two or season one, one of the two, Joffrey was still in the mix. They cut off an arm or something and, get, and we're gonna send it to King's Landing. I thought that could have been the best evidence, like yeah. the, the White Walker's hand, but it never got anywhere. They probably looked at it the same way we'd be looking at them aliens from Mexico. <laughs> Paper mache <laughs> aliens. <laughs> <laughs> well, they don't look mad at each other, so. We took Costly Rock. That's very good to hear, isn't it? Don't tell me. You'll want to discuss this amongst yourselves. You Perhaps. will stay. All my allies are gone. They've been taken from me while I've been sitting here on this island. You still have the largest army. Who won't be able to eat because Cersei has taken all the food from the Reach? Oh, I see. And the unsullied back. We still have enough ships to carry the Dothraki to the mainland. Your strategy has lost us Dawn, the Iron Islands, and the Reach. If I have underestimated our enemies... Our enemies? Your family, you mean. Ooh. Perhaps you don't want to hurt them after all. That's a really tough dynamic, Tyrion. I never thought about that. Yeah, me You got either. one option, and that's to succeed, bro. Or your loyalty Enough with the clever question. plans. I have three large dragons. I'm going to fly them to the Red Keep. What kind of a queen am I if I'm not willing to risk my life to fight them? A smart one. What do you think I should do? Ooh. John's like, what the hell? He's like, I'm just a guest here. I'm archaeologist. I'm at war. To. I'm losing. What do you think I should do? People who follow you know that you made something impossible happen. 
Maybe that helps them believe that you can make other impossible things happen. Build a world that's different from the shit one they've always known. But if you use them to melt castles and burn cities, you're not different. That was wise there, Jonathan. The right. I mean, yeah, that's sort of the point, right? That's what Tyrion was preaching to her. Right. You can't really afford to be queen of the ashes, because then you're just your, your dad, you know? Yep. And we're going to leave the world better than we found it. Don't lunge. What was the term? Break the will or something she said? Don't go where your enemy leads you. It's like when you pull up and they're playing basketball and you want to get going. <laughs> and Loki, you, you just know you're about Don't it. fight someone like her in the first place. <laughs> nice sword. Very nice dagger. <laughs> If they haven't contributed the right amount of grain to the stores, then I'm afraid they'll have to make do with what they've brought. We can't. It's been a while since I trained. I can go and find the Master of Arms to you, my lady. He didn't beat the Hound. You did. I want to train with you. You're a legend, Brienne. You swore to serve both my mother's daughters, didn't you? Move aside, Podrick. No problem. Whooping my butt for no Bro, reason. Bro, this is that pay-per-view. My lady, it's too small. I won't cut you. Don't worry. I'll try not to. Dang, Arya. But she did that little head twist thing girls did that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I gotta stop saying you know what I'm saying. I know that's a bad habit. She looks like little Ned though. That's why I want to cry. Oh, she got that from the waif. Dang, she's so swinging too. Uh oh. <laughs> Draw, huh? Who taught you how to do that? No one. Literally. She's so confused. She's like, oh. <laughs> she's like whatever. This girl's annoying. Falls in all these mysteries. <laughs> but she's being literal, but there's still mysteries. Why did that bother Ari or why did that bother Sansa so much? Now she's scared of her little sister. Or maybe she might she, kill or, me and take power. Or maybe she's like, Arya's always taking the show. I'm the lady here. I don't know. Littlefinger liked it. He was bowing to her. <laughs> what do you think of her? Boo. I believe you know of whom I speak. Yeah, who did you she think? A good heart. A good heart? I've noticed you're staring at a good heart. <laughs> There's no time for that. I saw the Night King, Davos. I looked into his eyes. How many men do we have in the North to fight him? 10,000 less? Fewer. Speaking of good hearts, Miss Sunday of North. <laughs> Sir Davos, Lord Snow. King Snow, isn't it? No, that doesn't sound right. King John? It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> King John. Can I ask a question? Of course. Your name is Jon Snow, but your father's name was Ned Stark. No, I'm a bastard. My mother and father weren't married. Is the custom different in North? We don't have marriage in North, so the concept of a bastard doesn't exist. That sounds liberating. <laughs> Why did you leave your homeland? I was stolen away by slavers. If I may, how did a slave girl come to advise Daenerys Targaryen? She bought me for my master and set me free. Of course, you're serving her now, aren't you? I serve my queen because I want to serve my queen. Because I believe in her. And if you wanted to sail home to Narth tomorrow? Then she would give me a ship and wish me good fortune. I believe it. You believe that? Yeah. I know it. We got that good health insurance Many job, you know? We came with her from Essos. We believe in her. She's not our queen because she's the daughter of some king we never knew. She's the queen we chose. Will you forgive me if I switch sides? <laughs> onion. Onion. Is that a Greyjoy ship? Uh-oh, Theon, you about to get your head knocked off. You about off. to get punched or something. Go hustle, go hustle, boys. Oh, gosh. Remember, there was a time John was going to leave the the wall Just to, to go, go kill whoop him. him. Yeah. Mm. Oh. This show's all about reunions, ain't it? This episode in particular. John? Rake. <laughs> Didn't know you were here. Don't. I, he don't like you. Sansa, is she all right? <laughs> what you did for her is the only reason I'm not killing you. Ooh. We heard your uncle attacked your fleet. He did. He it was crazy as hell. When he rode down on that thing. Yeah, <laughs> he came in wild. Euron has her. Came to ask the Queen to help me get her back. Queen is gone. I mean, every time they cue to Jamie, that means they about to intersect or something. Right. Are oh, they chilling? They're like Lion King out there, parading by the water. Randall's punk, punk All ass. The safely through the gates of King's Landing. Good. We need to get the last of these wagons over the Blackwater Rush before nightfall. The head of the line is ambushed. The tail will never be able to reinforce in time. Well, we are stretched a bit thin. With your permission, flogging stragglers has a marked effect on mobility. Let's give them fair warning first. These men fought well at Highgarden. 
Dang. It's crazy. <laughs> he said, what in the tarnation? This man old school is mess. So Jamie. Rick on. Dick on. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you he said that just to hear him say that. Your first battle? It was glorious. Come on. Your father's not here. All my life we've been pledged to house Tyrell. I knew some of those men. I hunted with them. They didn't deserve to die. But Lady Olena chose to betray her queen and support the Targaryen girl. So here we are. Didn't expect it to smell like that. Men shit themselves when they die. Didn't they teach you that at fancy lad school? Well, I learned it when I was five. Poor man. <laughs> We're not all grimy, my guy. Listen. This ain't hoofbeats. That sounds like horses, don't it? Mm-hmm. What well, rise horses? Dothrakis. Dothraki. Man, that man just talking about whooping them because they're slow <laughs> and then like in a fight. <laughs> Are we about to have another battle right now? Maybe she wants to take the gold and stuff because House Tyrell was like her supporter. So that when they took that, they kind of low key really screwed her up. And honestly, the best way to cut off the Lannisters and win is to not let them, you know, keep that gold. You see that shadow though? Where are they? Oh, what a shot. And that is the worst possible place to encounter them. Open fields. Yeah, because look, there's only water back there. Yeah. Spears! Man, the army of the living is getting thinner, ain't it? That's the thing. They have no idea. They should just work together, but they can't. Get back to King's Landing. I'm not abandoning my army. You're the commander, not a damn infantry man. We can hold them off. They're going to be shocked because they ain't never seen it before. <laughs> this sucks, though, because I don't really know who I'm rooting for. I don't want to see Jamie get burnt up right now. I don't, you know what I, mean? right. I don't want to see their army weaken either. That's what makes either. the show so good. Yeah, I don't want to see their army weaken. I don't want to see her army weaken. I want to see everyone's army weaken. Dang, she took our Damn, she cooked them up like one of them Blackstone girls. <laughs> now you really seen it, dick on. They just run through it. Gandalf's horse is getting away though. They said bye. We ain't got no business here. <laughs> oh. Dang, they busted up your line. It would suck to have to stand there and get tackled by a horse. They said, this, that, Essos. So many casualties here. This is nuts, man. I'm just sitting here begging to take me into Jamie and Bran, or Bron. I know, right? Because how are they going to get out of this one? I just want me! She's coming right for him. I don't want anyone to get hurt. Oh, they just Did Drogon right just say skirt? Yeah. Re deflection. He said, I got some thick skin, boys. Some real thick skin. <laughs> Let me just Dracarys over here. Cook. Evan Scorpion is over there. Go get it then. I can't shoot with one hand. <laughs> Dang, so they got that with them? They just keep it on them? I thought they'd mount that thing on top of a tower in King's Landing or something. Like on the Hobbit, right? Right. You have to have it from a good spot. You just drag it around. Uh oh. Come on, Jamie. Ooh. That's right, buddy. But how's Tolly? He said, "Please don't make fun of my name no more." <laughs> it's getting old. Let's go, Brian. Some ninja stars. Okay. Isn't that the thing? Bro. Always do. Dang. That horse is like, Lieutenant Dan. You know when you showed me that guy get punched and he was like, fell over like that? Yeah. That's what it looked like. Oh my gosh, Bronn. Like I want Bronn to survive, but if he hurts that dragon, I'm gonna be so mad at him. I don't really know how I feel about the dragon right now. Kind of just created hell on earth, didn't it? Yeah, but but y'all y'all just took over my, my ally. I gotta do it. Well, they're kind of defending themselves against her invasion though. <laughs> you know, she's kind of trying to invade their country. I don't know, she's a slippery slope. I mean, it's kind of, that's the good thing about the show. It just hurts on both sides. You don't want either one of them. Mm. Well, that was a quick death for him. I hope that arrow was worth it. I, don't, I know, I'm sure there's millions of them, right? Do not, do not. <gasps> Darien's there? That's his people. I know, it's like the people he grew up beside, all that junk. And his allies sitting there calling him his people and throwing shots at him. I know. I don't know, man. Those are the same people oh. that was gonna have him sentenced to death. It's just tough. <laughs> it's impossible, isn't it? I'll give it to Daenerys though. She's in the front line, boy. Kinda. She's on a dragon. <laughs> yeah, but they can she's still kind shoot of her. Run. They can still shoot her easy. Because if they're gonna shoot that flying thing, trust me, they're gonna shoot. They can shoot her. Oh. <gasps> oh. It hurt. 
Bam! Oh, no, 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 no. Oh. I was about to say, you better run, dude. He says, That's called the scorpion. Not anymore. Dang, he made it out of that. Oh, my gosh. There's Jamie's shot right there. I know. <gasps> and Tyrion's watching it, too. He's Flee, you idiot. Oh, man. Oh. No, no, no. Why? Dragon. <gasps> oh! Bro, that water's deep as hell. I thought that that water was only a foot deep. Like a little, yeah, like a little puddle. Oh man, he's really floating to the bottom of it. Cause his arm. Oh, and that armor. Hold on. Did I see that wrong? Yeah, the water's only a foot deep, but when he lands, it becomes an ocean. Did you see that? Has a big drop off. Sorry, yeah. guys. I don't know if y'all ever noticed that. I'm sure y'all do. Yeah, big drop off. That was it. Oh, man. And no music. Yeah, it's just the Y'all are trying to trick us. They're trying to trick us like that's the end of Jamie, but I'm not buying that. Yeah, I don't buy that either. He's too good of a character to go out like that. Yeah, he's not going out He like fell that. into the magical lagoon. Yeah, sure. It's Pam. Is that Zac Efron? All right, guys, that was Game of Thrones, The Spoils of War, babe. What did you think about that episode? I thought it was fantastic. I had a great time. It was so good to see those reunions that we finally needed the to see. The reunion episode, was yeah, it not? That, yeah, it might have just, it should have been called the reunion. The reunion special. <laughs> yeah, the reunion special. <laughs> the thing about those reunions is at first during the show, I was thinking like, man, I thought I wanted to see the joy and the tears right. and the happiness. We didn't really get that. So during the show, I thought it was sort of, you know, anticlimactic. But then looking back on it. Like, how could it be any different right. than that? Those That's, characters and I was have been crying so much. Because I thought I was going to have this, like, ah, sobbing moment. But I was crying more for the pain of how much they had to go through to get to that moment. And you can tell that they've all just been through so much. And they've all grown. And you can yeah. tell they're in their final form. Because Arya, Sansa, and Bran at this point, they're mm -hmm. all very stoic. They're all, hello, it's yeah. good to see you. And they're all three like that. Yeah. And they started out as, like, babies. It's like way, the three so. eye, the assassin Arya. And the lady, the lady Stark. of Winterfell, <laughs> the lady Stark of Winterfell. Which one's the coolest character? Which one grew up to make their parents the most proud? I mean, probably Bran because he's like a cosmic being of right. some sort. You <laughs> yeah. know? He's like, he's like really like he he goes into the trees and is like, like that's important. He saw, he got to see his parents doing it. <laughs> he got to see his pre birth. He knows like so many secrets too. Like so every, weird. and that's the thing. That's the thing that's so funny about Bran is when he was talking to Littlefinger. Called when he's talking out. to Sansa. When he's talking, yeah, we'll we'll address that in a yeah, second. Yeah. When he's talking to Sansa. When he's talking to Arya. He like calls back to things that make him like they're like okay, it's cool to see you, but bye. Like you're bringing up some like dude. You're bringing up some stuff we don't need to talk about. Thank you. I know I did some bad stuff. Anyways, but yeah. he's like, so, hello. <laughs> Hello, Brandon. It's me, Arya. He's like, oh, I thought a girl was no one. <laughs> <laughs> like he's like that. She's like, know? okay, okay, so, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> but anyways, it was funny though when Littlefinger hands him the dagger, and we expect Bran to be like, ooh, the thing that almost got me. And nah, he wasn't tripping. No, nah, he just ends up being so cold to it. Like, oh, what am I supposed to do with this? Hold on, I just want to see what the opening scene was of this. It was um. That's right. Yeah, so let's start at the beginning, guys. So we started out this incredible episode. Jamie was like, skr, skr. I got paid, boys. What's up? Iron Bane getting paid. And he's, he's like, here, Bron, here's a whole yeah. bag of gold. And I do want to point out, dude, Bron the sellsword, man. This man, I don't, I don't know how his character is going to end up finishing out the series. He's a sellsword, right? But he's been promised a castle. He's been promised a beautiful wife. And he's been promised... A bag of gold. Well, he got his bag of gold. The problem with Bronn is he has a sellsword. So he's either got to completely ditch Jamie because he's like, dude, I'm tired of being drugged into your damn dragon wars. I ain't doing it no more. Or he has to get his castle. I don't really yeah. want to see him get burnt alive by a dragon, dude. So no. I really hope and Jamie at some point it. can stop making him be like his right hand man in those situations. <laughs> Literally his right hand man. <laughs> oh, man. He ain't getting paid enough for all that. Yeah. <laughs> he fought a dragon. So. But, um,. Yeah, so anyways, Braun in this episode, while we're on this topic, was absolute beast. He, yeah, he was awesome. He, he so was awesome. like the guy on The Hobbit who penetrated the dragon. I forgot his name, dang it. But Penetrated the dragon. The dragon <laughs> who scale. Penetrated a dragon. The dragon scale, remember? He Shot him with a bow and arrow? Yeah, but anyway. Well, maybe say it that way, jeez. No, but that's how they said it on the thing. They penetrated the dragon scale. I know, but you didn't say that. You just said the guy who penetrated a dragon. Oh, anyways. Anyways, guys. Sorry, Ms. Hoover is weird like that. She's perverted. Any, no, I'm not. Anyways, <laughs> that was accidental. But Braun was absolute beast behind the scorpion. Although it got burned up, RIP scorpion. I don't really care. 
about that. I'm glad I got Rune up. But let's just, let's address the the horse in the room. Ron is not invited to the horse race no more because he cut off a horse's leg. Yeah, he did. That Wild. was that was messed up. But it had to be done because. <laughs> but the cool part about that whole scene, all of that, was the the hard to pick a side feeling. Yeah, that is true. And I really about. liked that. I really liked that we're this far into the season and we, I mean, the series, and we definitely are having a hard time deciding because we just have had such a journey with each character that it hurts when we have to see them like fight each other at this point. And also yeah, the ties sure. are so deep, like seeing Tyrion look over at Jamie was just bringing tears in my eyes every time because it was like, he know he's on this side now, but it also hurts to kill your family. Like your family's your family. Jamie speared his life. Like right it's a lot and jamie was his boy before that like they were tight like if you remember in season one Tyrion's going through his like brothel phase is like and what's wild is jamie wasn't on the battlefield looking for Tyrion because mm -hmm. i don't think that he knew Tyrion was going to be on a battlefield no you know i really don't so in his mind Tyrion's living in exile hiding somewhere i yeah, think he's gonna be so. absolutely shocked when he figures out this man's moved up the ladder yeah, yeah. i'm surprised that's gonna be and that's moment. cool that it hasn't got out to anyone i guess what? um that he's the hand of the queen like, you know, it, it hasn't gotten to. Well, Kate that just Landon goes to show there's no one in Daenerys's camp sending sneaky little letters anymore. That's good. Yeah, which she, which shows that her she's some loyal peeps, which is good. And she has a small circle. too, Right. And and speaking of that, I just wanted to give a little like nod to Miss Miss Sunday in this one, because when Davos and John confronted her like, yo, what's it like to work for Daenerys? Tell us the real gritty details. Does it suck? And she's like, no, it's the best. If if I wanted to leave, she'd let me leave tomorrow. And I think that showed John and Davos, like, she's not that bad. Like, maybe we should maybe side with her. Maybe John did bend the knee and we don't know. I don't know. She's not that bad. The problem with Daenerys is it's not that Daenerys is bad. She's obviously she obviously has a great moral compass compared to the characters in the show. Like, no doubt. The problem with Daenerys is she's made this problem that she's going to break the will. And so far, she seems to be doing it. But at the same time, she has this dilemma. Do I just go to the red keep and snatch Cersei out of it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And I personally kind of think that she should do that. That's right. just my thought. But and I so, see Tyrion side of it too, though. I, but if I you really do, do that, then you're just another tyrannical yes. ruler. And so and I understand the too. cycle. So I personally don't think, so here's my thought, right? My thoughts are the, the, the Targaryens think that, well, she thinks she's entitled to the throne because of bloodline, right? The Lannisters took the throne. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So, that's sort of the rules that they play by. So if Daenerys decided she wanted to go over there and take the throne by force, you can't be mad at her for it because right. that's the established rules of the game. You don't have to right. play that way, but they are part of the rules. I mean, that's just the Game of Thrones we play. And you saw she almost got a dragon killed. She almost got shot. She almost got Jamie killed, right? Mm. And I ain't down with that. And so in a way, it would be... And like, I love Cersei's character, but I mean, dude, that that lady's got to die, right? I mean, she's <laughs> awful. So if Daenerys went over there and just drug her out, I wouldn't be mad about it. I I, w I wouldn't I couldn't complain. But at the same time, there'd be a very very scary tale to tell. The tale of Daenerys Targaryen, the one who snatched Cersei from the Red Keep with her. It would make people. It would Ooh. make it hard for people to want to support that as well. You know. Well, you got to understand, people in Westeros. They're just driving cars, and you're over here talking about a flying carpet. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They're like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> they ain't ready for all that. So Yeah, it's going to be a surprise when they get to see you finally. And it's not like they're going to see it, and they're going to be like, oh, my God. Like, I can't believe this woman has a dragon. That's great. I, you know, I didn't really know dragons existed anymore. But now that she has a dragon, she can use that dragon to kill all the bad guys. And finally, mm -hmm. we can have this great place where we can all live. They're going to be thinking, dude, like the moment I don't pay enough taxes, that dragon's going to eat me in my family. Right. Like, th yeah, I can see where that would be, but we'll see how she actually plays it. I don't know. Well, that's sort of the point is I think she's just trying to figure out. And I think that's just the hard, the hard thing that she's faced with is like if she does the right thing and if she does right by people, it comes at great personal risk for her and her yeah. mission. And I believe in her mission because things are not going very good in Westeros. Talk about it. Right. Well, of course they're not going good in Westeros because, of course, it just got taken over by Cersei. It's not going good in Westeros. Sorry to interrupt you because, like I was saying, it's the same old, same old. Yeah. we got to do something different. But go ahead. Right. But anyways, uh, it seems to me like Cersei is going to still, like, they're going to still be struggling because there's not going to be any food. Because although the Tyrells may, might have got their gold there, I don't think, I think the the 
food is burnt up and we don't have any more because Sansa's over here dealing with that crap too. So we're sort of getting to the point in the show where everything's becoming extremely important. Dragon glass is critical. Like don't waste a shard. Which was of it. crazy because John Food's went critical. in there and found all those cave drawings, which made Daenerys be like, okay, like I'll support the North. Which is weird to me, man, because like, I like the cave drawing part. Don't get me wrong, that part was cool. But in my mind, I'm thinking like if I see that. There's two trains of thought you can have either. Oh, man, I see cave drawing. So all the rumors must be true. Here's the proof. Look how old. Or you're going to think to yourself, well, this is just more confirmation of why we have these silly legends to begin with, because a couple people found a couple cave paintings. Right. It could go two ways. It. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? But to me, it seemed like it was just more of her. Was she convinced? It was. I think it was just another way for her to be like, okay, cool. Yeah, we can bond together, but bend the knee. Bend you know? the knee. So she still wasn't trying to hear it at the end of the it, day. It, I mean, it just, the way she went about it was a little vague, but right then she was interrupted with really bad news. So it was like hard to really judge how she was feeling in that moment because right then she got into war mode. So it was, um, but the thing I think that for Daenerys's part that, john and davos kind of noticed was not only the con the conversation with Masande, but also when daenerys heard about the stuff she was game to just hop on the dragon and go like she was game so to me i think when she for, heard about the stuff you're talking about the the gold and all that yeah when she heard about uh get her her ally getting killed olena and being taken of all their resources and all that so she was game to just go over there and like handle business herself. And for me, I think that that's going to for John and Davos, that's a big deal for them because that might make whatever ally we have with her later more important. Yeah, it's also hard to judge your character because she's backed by three giant dragons, though. It's just one of those things. Daenerys, Daenerys is just a very complicated. But John told creature. her, John said, I would use it, but I wouldn't use it to like go take out the Red Keep. I would use it to. I don't know, liberate. I don't know exactly what he said. Well, John was just saying, like, where you're from, they spin it a little different. But where we're from, we sit around the campfire with flashlights and we tell stories about you and your family and how y'all used to pull up with dragons and kill everybody. Y'all are literally our deepest, darkest nightmare in a <laughs> lot of ways. Yeah. You know, I mean, and especially in this world, like, even in even in our society, oh, Nazi soldier, horrible, right? Mm -hmm. Since shivering on your spine, it's terrible. But we don't really live in that world. I mean, we're all playing video games and going to work and going to gas stations and drinking energy drinks. You oh, know so what I they mean? don't even know it's a threat. They just think it's a myth. Dragons. Well, but same with the Night King. That's how Daenerys feels. It's a myth. What really. I'm saying is those people adhere to their history in a way that our cultures and our people and our reality, we just don't. Right. Like they, they are the every internet, 14 year old, got, every yeah. 12 year old there is like, this is so and so Targaryen. This is how yeah. they yeah. always, and it's very important. It's it's like, it's like church to them. You know and it's I mean? almost like some of them feel like they have an elitist when they know more. So when they yeah. hear all these tales of all these dragons and the whores and all that, it's not like when we hear tales of world war ii and that's terrible like they hear it on a they hear it deeper like they're actually listening in a way that we don't listen yeah because they actually have real life consequences in this world in and a that's way that what i like really about them. this world because if you you can't parallel it with this world because their history and their families and all those ties that just run so deep are so important to every person in this universe every person you can just look at someone and you could see they have blonde hair and whatever and they're lannister and you know all about house lannister and everything like yeah. that's pretty i think that's unique but i think that's what makes this series work well i think what works with this show is because in this in this show or in this world the rules are very clear you know there is a such thing as honor if you if you if you swear an oath you keep it and and then here comes jamie and jamie's like well what would you do if your king told you to kill all these innocent people that's and, the gray area he adds and the there's always going to be yeah. a gray area right but at least in this world, people are willing to at least have that conversation. And if they're open to listening to Jamie, they can hear what he's saying. But in our reality, like there is no honor. Like what there is no concept of honor. It's all fluid. Like we live in a very fluid society where all these like old traditions and stuff, what I think is great. Uh, you know, if I think going and eating with your family is amazing, there's going to be somebody out there who says it's actually disgusting and I'm right. terrible for it. So, and that's the world we live in and they don't seem to live in that world. And so I think that kind of makes it romantic in a way. They all have a universal. Right. But the downside of that world is your family ties running so deep that they're still blind. your enemies. Yeah. 
Yeah. Like for example, if you see a house Tyrell and maybe your house, your cousin three years back, y'all fought in a night's battle and so you died. Now you hate them. That has nothing to do with you, but your family hates them. So that's but we how still live works. like that in a lot of ways. Well, we kind of do. Yeah. I mean, I guess the truth is, is the, the, the reason this world's interesting is because there have been points in human history where the culture and stuff was significantly different. We had Kings and we spoke, you know, proper and things like that. And just tradition and stuff was real. I mean, people used to really care about like traditions and cultural things and stuff in a way that we don't really now. But at the same time, like you said, it has its downsides. Yeah. You know, Kings. But I think that's what makes me like this world so much, because even though not all the people are great, I really do like those traditions in a way. Like I like how like classical they can be and how they make me feel like, I don't know, safe sometimes in this when I'm watching this, because sometimes you can only expect someone to do so much because you know what they believe. Right. And an example of that is Brienne. You know what I'm saying? Well, I guess the thing about this show is you watch Game of Thrones and you don't really just see. I don't, bro, I don't know, man. This is weird. It's just a weird thing. It's just romantic because it's on TV. At the end right. The and yeah. it, but it, but being in Westeros makes you feel like, I don't know. That's what I'm saying. I, I have this feeling when I'm watching this show because I, I feel like I have a good read at this point of people's morals and their moral compass, or at least I think I do. So when I'm seeing these things play out, it's really cool to know, like, just based off of where they're from, based off what their oaths are, Maybe just like what their actions could be. You Maybe, can weigh those out now. Sorry, baby. I tried twice to not interrupt you. And I'm I sorry. You're so, no, no, no. I think what it is is in this world, like, your name can mean something. If you show up to the town square, your community will actually, like, acknowledge you. You can... Do you get what I'm trying yeah. to say? Like, all that stuff matters. But in real life society, bro, don't nobody care who you are. Right. You know what I mean? Unless you can, like, throw a touchdown or something, they really don't care who you are. So, um... Well, that's, you know, what, that, that's, just that's just what I'm saying. Why I think Game of Thrones is just special because it's just you. I've got to learn these characters so good to the point where I just can like kind of predict what paths they could take. And that's what I like about it is because it's you could weigh out the options of what one character can take. And it could be different because of just how much they've been through. Yeah. So Ari and Brienne decided they were going to have a little scrap, which I think I read that wrong. I'm not really sure how I read it. It seems like to me. Arya wanted to fight Brienne because she wanted to basically absorb her abilities and fight her that I wish she could mm-hmm. get to know her and take her abilities. But in the show, I was just sitting there thinking it was an ego thing. I thought she just yeah. wanted to make sure. She like was real time, still, you thought that? Well, I just thought that she wanted to be the best warrior from her hometown. Well, to me, and Brienne being in there, she wanted like to fight her. Like we kind of discussed when we were like taking the notes, we, we think that's why he said real time. Like we had a discussion about this. But we think that Arya is kind of like an MMA fighter who's going around the world. To get her training to be the ultimate. I said real time because in real time I said that it was a. Uh, what did I say? In real time I said that it was because of her ego. I yeah. thought that it was. Yeah, yeah I thought it was an ego thing. Well, you just thought she wanted to be better than her or something. I don't know. But anyways, we that was a beautiful moment. And it was Sansa's read on it was a little interesting. I, I don't really know what to think about that. I'm sure like if I watch it back, I'll really know what she was feeling. But it seemed to me like she walked off from that. So she didn't even see who won the fight or whatever. She just walks off. Did she see? I don't remember I don't exactly. Remember, but I, I do know she was there and she walked off. So she walked off abruptly. Kind of like I wasn't sure how to read that. That's what I'm saying. I'm just re- I don't know how to read it, guys, either. But if I had to guess, it's probably this is a really dumb explanation. But in my mind, I would imagine if I'm Sansa seeing my little sister be able to fight like that would hurt in a way because you look at it and you say, Oh, I see what you've been up to. You've been up like you've been, oh, at, you've like, been at war. Yeah. Cause the, you know, in the crypt, she said this, I have a list of killing people and it's like Sansa's just like laughing it off, but maybe she's not. Well, Sansa seems to be at that stage where she's pissed. Like now she's revenge Sansa. So yeah. She's pissed. She's pissed off. So it seems like to me when she saw that, that was just a reminder that not only did they take my home from me, they took my innocence from me. They took my sister from me. They Mm -hmm. took her innocence. They took my brother from me. And I think maybe the joy she saw on, you know, her face when she was fighting, maybe she didn't like that either because that's cost their family so much. It's so hard to read her. I I don't really know, but I'd imagine that would, it would suck to see that. You know what I mean? Imagine seeing your little sister just 
go away and you don't even know she's alive and she comes back just a battle tested warrior that, you know that'd be yeah. kind of weird to see and, so. then, and then she's saying I have a list to kill people and then you, now that you've seen her do that you actually are like I thought that was just a joke but okay <laughs> maybe she's like that's kind of psychotic kind of like Ramsey was you know <laughs> maybe I don't you know I think time will tell with that but we did talk about the dagger right the only Valyrian still dagger or whatever we obviously talked about how Littlefinger thought he was about to pull up on Bran <laughs> because oh you're in charge now 100% let's get in your head you know, and, he probably thought he could get over on Bran easy because right. he's handicapped. So he probably felt like I could use that to my advantage. But Bran said, nah, bro, chaos is a ladder. You yeah, don't forget it because you said it. Don't forget that. And that was intense because that Valyrian steel is important. And it's just as important as dragon glass. Am I right? Well, they have. Yeah, yeah, it is. Like it Especially kills. It coming. kills the um, dead. So. All right, guys, that was basically it, man. Like, comment, subscribe. Hit us up on Patreon if you guys want to see the full uncut reactions. For wrapping this show up and it's getting better I'm, I'm really liking the shot of this season having a blast yeah i'm glad that we're getting all these reunions that we've sort of been waiting on so now that we're getting all these reunions out of the way i feel like we're getting to the final act of this show, it seems so. like for real we're gearing with anytime we have john making moves which mining the dragon glass and stuff i feel like we're preparing for the wars to come that they keep bringing up that we haven't seen but i'm i wish kind of we would see the the um the dead side like are they sharpening up some <laughs> some something are they do they have victory speeches they're like writing their goodbye letters to their yeah. families <laughs> they're yeah. like they're like oh, I don't them know. living people have been messing it up for thousands of years it's our time we're gonna take the wall over they've been taking all the resources <laughs> i'm so cold won't leave us no sweaters um yeah man that was a lot of fun guys peace